So what is React? Well, technically, it's just a JavaScript view library. In other words, it's responsible for creating the user interface. So for example, in our app, it would show the channels, the users, and the messages, and handle any interactivity such as adding channels or messages. React is surprisingly simple to get a handle on, so let's get started and create our first React component. I'm starting off in an empty directory, and using Sublime, let's go ahead and create a new index.html file. Next, we'll go ahead and create a minimal HTML document using Sublime's HTML snippet. We're gonna be using ES2015, or what used to be called ES6 throughout this course. At this point, modern browsers don't fully support ES2015 syntax, so we'll use the awesome Babel library to get around this constraint. Babel will take our modern ES2015 code and transpile it into ES5 syntax. In other words, Babel does code-to-code -code compilation. The output, ES5 syntax, is supported in modern browsers. Typically, this transpiling happens as a build step, but for now, to keep things simple, we'll just have the transpiling step happen in the browser. Later, we'll have the transpiling step happen as part of our build process. I'm gonna pull in Twitter Bootstrap so our app is a bit nicer to look at and I'm gonna add a teeny bit of CSS just to make the text bigger. Next, I'll make a simple div tag with an ID of app and a class of container fluid. Let's pull the React and Babel libraries into our page. Technically, we're pulling in a special build of Babel that will allow in-browser transpiling. Later, we'll use the normal Babel library. Now let's create another file, app.js, which we'll write our React code in, and we'll pull this into our index.html file. I'm gonna use a slightly different type, text slash babel, in the script tag for this file. Using this custom type will trigger the browser.js babel file to read the file, transpile the contents, and load it into the page. I wanna reiterate, we're only using this method for simplicity's sake. We'll come up with a better approach once we know the basics of React. Let's start learning React by implementing the channel section that we saw in the wireframe drawing. So React's just a view library that supports rendering the user interface and handling interactions. The way you build the user interface in React is by creating components. Just think of components as pieces of the UI or widgets. Let's look at the wireframe of our app again. Here's the way I divide the channel section into components. A channel section component here, then within the channel section, I'd create a channel list component and a channel form component. Then within the channel list, I'd create a channel component. Creating these React components is what we'll be working on in the next several screencasts. Let's start with the innermost component we'd like to make, the channel component. So here's a question for you. If you were just writing plain old HTML for a channel, what would it look like? I'd bet most of you would probably just use an li tag with the channel's name. Okay, so our React channel component that we're getting ready to build should probably create or render an li tag in the browser. After all, React is just a UI library, and knowing our UI is just HTML in the browser, it's fairly easy to figure out what our component should probably do. The next question is, how do we make a React component that creates an li tag with the channel's name? To answer this, let's start coding. The way we create a React component using ES2015 is by using the class feature. So we'll create a channel class, and we'll have it extend the react.component class. If you've used object-oriented inheritance, this should seem very familiar. We're essentially saying our channel class should have the attributes and behaviors of the react.component class, which is a starting point. Now we just need to customize our component to do exactly what we need it to do. The bare minimum requirements to create a React component is implementing a render method. This is the method that will get called by the React runtime, and it's our way as developers to tell the runtime exactly what we want to happen when this component's used. In other words, how the component should be displayed visually and how it responds to events. Let's write a render method, and in our case, we'll simply return some HTML, an li tag with a hard-coded string channel name. Okay, for those of you seasoned web developers who've never seen React, you might be cringing at what you're seeing, a mixture of markup and JavaScript code. I think that's a very common initial response to React. However, please try and have an open mind while you learn React. I think most of you will actually warm up to this seemingly strange mixture of markup and code. So here's what's happening with this code snippet. We're writing what's called JSX, which is an XML-like syntax extension to ECMAScript. This code will get transpiled by Babel from the mixture of markup and code to simply code. 
So the li tag we wrote will get converted to an actual JavaScript function call that will create the li tag and load it in the browser. In fact, let me show you exactly what happens during the transpiling step, which is easy to see on the Try It page on the Babel website. On the left-hand side, I'll paste our component code, and then on the right-hand side, you'll see the ES5 equivalent code created by Babel. Now, there's a lot going on, but for the moment, let's just focus on what's happening with the li tag. On the right side, you see a call to react.createElement, passing in the type of tag we're trying to create, li in this case. Null is the second parameter. We'll take a closer look at this a little bit later. The last parameter is the child parts of our li tag. In our case, a simple string channel name that we hard-coded. Okay, so what's the point of mixing markup and JavaScript only to have it later transpiled to straight JavaScript? First of all, you have to understand the premise, that the markup and the code that generates the markup are intimately tied together, and separating the markup from the code is somewhat cumbersome. So why not rethink the historical norm of separating the markup and the code to make things a bit more convenient and manageable? Now, some people considering this stated premise may think, if we're not gonna separate the markup and the code, why not just write code? You know, actual JavaScript. At least then you aren't doing this weird mixture of code and markup. So this is possible. You could call the react.createElement function and pass in the appropriate parameters. However, if you take that approach beyond the trivial example we have here, and you think about nested HTML tags, it becomes easy to recognize an unwieldy pattern of deeply nested function calls. I believe most people would agree that user interfaces are best described in a declarative way, like HTML. So as a convenience to developers and designers who will be reading and writing this code, why not just embed the markup in our code and convert that markup into function calls as part of the build step? This results in code that's easier for us developers and designers to look at and understand at a glance, but in the runtime, it's just function calls in JavaScript. Okay, let's get back to coding. So we've made a basic component, but we aren't actually using it yet. We haven't actually called for our component to be used in our page. However, with one simple function call, we can get our newly created component to display on our page. This is done by simply calling react-dom.render, passing in the component we like rendered as the first parameter, and the location in the DOM we like it placed as the second parameter. You'll notice the first parameter is using our newly created component in an HTML or XML-like tag. This again is JSX, which will get transpiled into runnable JavaScript by Babel. Let's save our file, then use the serve command available from NPM to serve the page. We'll open the browser and navigate to the page. And sure enough, we see an li tag with the channel name text. So in less than 10 lines of code, we've written our first React component. Cool. I've hard-coded the channel name, but that's not very realistic. In our completed application, the channel names will be coming from our server. So the next question is, how can we pass a name to our component rather than hard-coding it? This is done with properties, which we'll cover in the next video.